I rarely re-record videos, but um, I'm going to have to in this instance because the previous uh, version I did this, this video uh, was absolutely destroyed by induced hum from an external microphone I'd plugged into the iPad, but I ran it, the cable for the microphone, I ran it in the vicinity of the wiring of these LED floodlights and they put out a lot of electrical noise. Mm. So uh, that was, a, it sounded like an aquarium pump running in the background, so I thought I'd re-record this. So this is, now I've taken it to bits, this is one of these uh, bicycle lights that clips in the back of your bike and it's not just got the LEDs at the front that flash and do various patterns, really annoying, it's got about eight patterns, you have to just keep clicking around until you get to the off position. But it's also got two lasers, two lasers that project flat beams. And the idea is that if you mount this behind your light, your bike, um, it projects two beams out at either side and it creates a sort of zone of uh, laser energy around your bike, laser energy, it's, it's just, it basically creates a, a, a illuminated zone, that's the best way to describe it, uh, on either side of your bike to encourage people to give you wider berth when they're overtaking it. And it comes from mounting with uh, the usual little clamp that goes on the, uh, I'm guessing the saddle support, and a rubber strap for gripping, and then it's got a spring-loaded mechanism that when you uh, click this into it, uh, it latches in, and then to release it, you press the catch underneath so it's not going to fly off as you're cycling along, hopefully. But it's quite interesting. It's got the it's got a fairly large chip-on-board type blob because there are two switches. The first one controls, I think it's a standard bike chip, and it's got eight positions, so to speak. When you click it, it goes around eight effects, well, seven effects plus off. And then the back one for the lasers has um, off, on, and flashing, and then off again, so much simpler. So I, I'm guessing real under this this blob is just two, two identical, well, not identical, but two typical bike chips, one being used for the lasers and one being used for the, the LEDs in the front. There's a transistor which I'm guessing is being used to drive the LEDs because the LEDs themselves, the laser, should I say, have a little resistor on board. Um, I'll actually, I've, I've taken one of these to bits, um, it's quite interesting how it comes to apart. There's the end cap, which has the... It's a, it's a standard straight beam laser, but it, the end cap has the sort of... What you might call a serrated plastic in it that splits the beam into a sort of vertical line. The plastic laser itself has a little circuit board shoved into the end, and uh, it's shoved into a plastic housing with the collimating lens, a focusable collimating lens, and then that has been glued solidly shut. And the, the laser itself is quite intriguing. I drew it out after looking through a microscope at it. So, this area here is the printed circuit board material. There's a little resistor. I'm not sure what the value of the resistor is. Um, hold on a second, I'll just take a look at that right now. I could theoretically work it out from the voltage drop and uh, the... It's uh, 22 ohms. Um, so that uh, limits the current to the laser chip itself, and the laser uh, is absolutely minute. It's quite an odd arrangement. It's got the circuit board material, and then it's got a copper shim raised up like a little shield above it, and I think this is all to do with heat dissipation and also so that this can be wedged in without putting any stress on the actual um, laser itself, because the laser itself is tucked in like a wee dot in the middle there. And it really does look like a dot, uh, with a wee wire flying up onto here. So it's bonded down onto one side of the uh, conductor. I think that's the negative it's bonded down onto. Uh, and then the positive uh, is the wee gold bond wire onto this sort of piece of copper here. And when you look up at, close at the chip, it's got this solid black substrate underneath it. And then a layer on top, a very thin layer of the lasing uh, semiconductor material, and then a contact on top. And when you look at it, when it's lasing, if you look vertically on it, so you're not obviously looking down into a laser with a microscope, which isn't a good idea, you can see it, the whole thing glows around the edge, which is just light spill more than anything else, really. But there's a very sharp point of light here and here, and that's the beam exit point. Uh, I think that this end is probably mirrored and this end probably semi-mirrored. I'm not 100% sure how the solid-state lasers work. But uh, after that, I'm guessing it's pretty much a typical gallium arsenide type technology, uh, just optimised into a tiny, thin lasing cavity. And when you power it up, the actual beam from the bare laser is actually quite messy. It's, it, it's actually quite a big splash of light. But when it's put through the collimating lens, it uh, 
converges it all together into that sharp laser beam. And then when you put it through the shaping lens, it then converts it into the line. So um, it's quite a neat, neat arrangement. And these things aren't that expensive. It's almost worth, you know, I, I know the laser modules themselves are quite cheap. They're not that expensive at all these days. But it's, uh, it's almost worth getting just the novelty of getting two fairly decent little lasers. They seem okay. They seem, I mean, obviously I haven't given them a long test, but um, they seem quite robust, certainly in their construction. But then again, how long have lasers been made? You know, it's, they're going to be super robust by, by this day and age. I can actually remember when I was a kid, the first laser, um, it was a ruby xenon laser, uh, appeared in Tomorrow's World, and it was just a pulsed dot, but you know, it was radical, it was like the latest thing, and now they, they have them in bicycle lights. I suppose ultimately one of the other exciting features of these bicycle lights is that if you, if someone uh, has a little instant and their bike and falls off, then they're going to shoot laser beams in random directions, which is, which is quite exciting. But yeah, it's a fun toy actually. I quite like this.